Good uh, morning, hello. everyone. Good morning. So here I am again. Uh, my name is Luciana, for those of you who uh, were not here yesterday, okay? Um, we are about to start. And here we have Professor Zina, um, who is uh, going to be um, teaching the lecture today. And we are going to uh, continue with the same um, the same way we did yesterday. So Professor is going to um, you know, deliver the lecture. We're going to welcome uh, questions uh, in the group chat. And uh, by the end, I will collect some of them, and uh, we and Professor Junior will be able to, um, you know, address some of these questions uh, over this interesting topic, um, which is uh, Brazilian culture, right? So, please, Professor, thank you very much for joining us today. It's a pleasure to have you here. Such an honor to have you here, also. And I am sure this is going to be a great uh, time for all of us to continue working with, uh, uh, you know, Brazilian studies as it is the topic of this industry. Thank you. Uh, good morning from Brazil to everyone. I, I know that uh, some uh, are in the afternoon and some at night, but here we are in the morning. I'm Junia Furtado. I'm professor here in uh, UFMG uh, from the history department. I work uh, on Atlantic world in 18th century. Uh, especially I work uh, uh, in a field that we call connected histories. And I work mostly the connection between uh, Brazil, uh, Europe, uh, mainly Portugal, Spain, and France, uh, and also Africa. And sometimes I, uh, depending on, on the work that I'm uh, doing, uh, I uh, look for other uh, spaces like uh, United States or Latin America and other countries in Europe like now I'm working with uh, a, a Portuguese diplomat that went to uh, Italy. So what I'm going to present today, uh, the subject is very, uh, uh, is enormous, uh, Brazilian culture, but I work this uh, thematic uh, inside the topics that I usually work. And I'm going to focus on culture on 18th century and I will explain that uh, if you are later, come to, to Belo Horizonte and come to FMG, come to Minas Gerais, which is the state uh, that Belo Horizonte uh, belongs, you, 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 uh, you will see that uh, this culture is very much presented in the state because the state uh, was colonized in 18th century uh, what is nowadays the state. It was a captaincy of Minas Gerais, created in 1720. And uh, different from uh, the coast of Brazil, which was colonized due to the sugar plantation, the area here was colonized due to the gold mines and after 1720 to the diamond mining. So we had a colonization very different from the coast because it was a, a lot of uh, small urban centers and I will present some of them today. And because of this, we have a very important uh, architecture uh, heritage from the 18th century. They are called the historical cities as the other cities has no history, but of course every city has uh, a history, but uh, uh, what is called in Brazil, the historical cities are the cities from the colonial past. And we have a lot of these cities and it's uh, one, uh, at least two of them, uh, Ouro Preto, which was called Vila Rica and Diamantina, which was called Tejuco, uh, are uh, uh, today uh, 
uh, World Patrimony Heritage uh, declared by UNESCO. So it's a very important uh, architecture uh, uh, heritage. And I, I'm going to talk a little bit of the culture of these cities in the 18th century, uh, because uh, much of this culture uh, we uh, are hairs uh, even today. And I will talk about uh, mostly about uh, parties, celebrations. Uh, and if you come to Minas Gerais in uh, uh, the Easter or in, in July, for example, uh, you even could uh, able to watch some of these parties that are still uh, being presented in some of these cities. So I will share my, 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 I will present a PowerPoint while I'm talking and I'm share my screen in order to, to you see what I'm going to present. I, I, I will try not to talk too much and uh, I, at most one hour. Uh, and after that, uh, we will debate and you are free to make any questions, even uh, making links to the present. I, I will answer if I can. So I, I will put the PowerPoint. Uh, so although the, the title is Brazilian culture in the past, I'm going to talk more about Minas Gerais. And this is a very uh, small chapter uh, because much of these parties and uh, celebrations and culture that I'm going to talk uh, were uh, held on churches or were organized by uh, uh, the churches in, 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 in Minas, which are a lot of churches and different uh, architectural styles that you could uh, see in the city, in the cities. So this is uh, Minas Gerais in 18th century. Uh, you see in black is the state nowadays and in uh, red, uh, the borders that this cartographer by the end of 18th century uh, was um, uh, claiming for Minas Gerais. And if you uh, see uh, in the borders of this red line, which is called uh, parte, da, parte de Pernambuco, which is uh, part of Pernambuco, part of Bahia on the north, part of Goiás on the west, part of São Paulo on the south, part of Rio de Janeiro and Espírito Santo on the east, you see Minas Gerais is in a, a crossroad uh, in the interior of Brazil. And um, it has uh, connections with all the main uh, captaincies in the 18th century. And due to the discoveries of gold and diamonds, we had a huge immigration to that area. And until uh, 1950s, 1960s, Minas Gerais was still the most populated state. Only after that, after the 50s, uh, that Sao Paulo surpassed Minas Gerais. Uh, and this uh, huge population started in the colonization in the 18th century. Well, wait. So uh, he, I, I will put some uh, pictures of the colonial cities, old pictures, so you can see what kind of uh, space this uh, culture that I'm going to talk today uh, took place. This city is Mariana. Uh, it was not the capital of the captaincy, but it was a very important city because after uh, 1750, it held the first uh, bishopric of Minas Gerais. And I will talk a little bit of a very important feast that happened exactly in 1748, uh, when the first bishop arrived in the city. Uh, so uh, you, you see it's uh, 
small villages, although it has the name of city, it, it was a small village and uh, a lot of gardens, uh, which provide food uh, for the, uh, the population, the local population. Uh, one important uh, uh, aspect of Minas Gerais, it's, uh, it's, it's geography. Uh, there are a lot of mountains, mountains and rivers. And it was on the bed of the rivers that the gold was discovered. So this is Vila Rica, which is nowadays Ouro Preto. Uh, it was the capital of the captaincy after 1720 when the captaincy was created. And you see this, uh, this is very typical of Minas Gerais. This seat put on the top of the mountains with uh, uh, these uh, streets very narrow and uh, very difficult to walk. And uh, usually the cities, even uh, Mariana also, were close to the rivers because it was on the rivers that the gold and afterwards the diamond were discovered. Uh, so here again, another picture of Villa Rica in the first uh, uh, image, the, on the front of the image, it's a golden uh, panning uh, exploration, exploitation, and you see uh, the importance of the churches in the, the daily life. And the, the, as I told you, this uh, mountain geography. So here is another important city, Sabará, which is nowadays part of Belo Horizonte. It's a, a, a it's this Belo Horizonte grow so uh, much that uh, in, uh, Sabara nowadays is one of the neighbors of the uh, megalopoly. I, I have to say to you, Belo Horizonte, if you come here, we have a difference from this, all the city that I'm showing to you because Belo Horizonte was built. It was, a cap it was built to be a capital of the state uh, by the end of 18th century. It was launched in the beginning of the 20th century. So it's a completely different city and a completely different landscape from this one that I'm showing to you. Because it's, it, uh, since the beginning was built as a modern city, a city uh, sought to, uh, uh, with large avenues, large roads, uh, we don't have, uh, when Belo Horizonte was built, this uh, slavery was already abolished. So uh, this, the houses here never had a space for the slaves, which was called Senzalas, which is different from these towns that I'm showing now, which the houses have in their basement uh, space for the living of the slaves. Uh, the uh, sl uh, slavery economy was very important. Uh, and when you see uh, in that images that I showed, the slaves were present on daily life. And I, I will talk about that more by the end of my talking. So uh, this is a, a, a small sketch of one of these cities, but to show two important uh, uh, institutions that every colonial city had that are very important for my talk today. Number seven is the church. As I told to you, much of the culture life uh, in the colony was uh, organized by the church. And number six is the, uh, what, the municipal chamber, which held the uh, most important uh, administrators sent from Portugal to ru ru rule the, 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 the space. And these two uh, institutions, the municipal chamber and the uh, church, uh, what were the sponsors of the most of the culture life that I'm talking today? Uh, the, even the municipal chamber and also the church, 
they had a, a, a very big amount of their income to spend in parties, in celebrations. And the function of these celebrations are two mainly. First of all, there was a principle of organization. And I will show to you that every uh, celebration has an inside organization where everyone is put on their place. So the most important people, for example, in a church sit in the front, in the first benches, uh, while the slaves uh, uh, stay or in the back of the church or outside the church. In every um, um, uh, uh, oh, I forgot this word in English. It's a very important word in my talk. Um, pro procession. In every procession, there is uh, also an organization, the place that everyone will occupy in the line and the symbols inside the church and also uh, on the streets when the process, uh, procession uh, uh, goes out, everything was uh, telling people who you are and what part of the, uh, the society you belong to. I must uh, uh, stress that uh, the, in the colonial past, it, it was before the French Revolution. So the basic principle uh, of this, this society is that uh, the society must be uh, hierarchized and people were born different and must remain different. So every aspect of this culture is to put you and show to the others what place do you, you held on this hierarchical and um, uh, society. So everybody was born different and should remain different. So if you are born white and free, you should remain white and free until uh, your uh, death. And because you are white and free, you have a lot of privileges that, uh, for example, the, the uh, mulatos, the mestizo population doesn't have. Although this is the principle of the society, doesn't mean that the society really function too well. So one of the characteristics of Minas Gerais that I will go into talk along my talk today was because it, as it was a mining society, in the beginning, uh, attracted a lot of men, a lot of men. There were much more men than women for a long time. Only in the, by the end of the 18th century, there was a kind of balance between sex in, the, in, in, in this society. But even then, the female were, the majority were African or colored. So of course, what you can expect it is that in Minas Gerais, in these small towns, a lot of white men starting, started having relationship with uh, colored women. And uh, that give birth to a very huge uh, uh, amount of colored, uh, mixed blood population. And what happened is that along the century, along the 18th century, this mixed blood population started claiming to have the same rights as their fathers uh, and not the same obligations as their mothers. And we, we will see uh, by the end of the century, some of these men uh, will be all, uh, even able to go to the universities in Portugal because there was no universities in Brazil. The Portuguese colonization was different from the Spanish. They didn't allow uh, to, uh, to establish universities in the colonies. And it's not because they want them uh, 
not to develop it, but they wanted that all the elite was formed, was prepared equally on in Portugal. So I told that the feasts had two main uh, purposes. The first was to show to everybody what is the place in this society, right? what the place uh, the, the person have should occupy, and on the other hand, uh, the other people will see the place that you occupy. So we will see a lot of disputes uh, in documents, people asking uh, uh, that they have the right because, for example, they are a member of the municipal chamber to sit on the first bench of the church because uh, not sitting there would be an offense for them because the other people will not see him, this person, in the right position that she should uh, uh, be seen by everybody. So these uh, celebrations, uh, important part of these celebrations as, uh, is that they are public, they occur in public. So everybody can see and be seen. And the other aspect, of course, there are celebrations. And uh, so there is this uh, teaching aspect but they are also a moment of uh, relax uh, from the tensions of this society. So there's a lot of uh, uh, spectacles like uh, music, theater, uh, that I will talk later, that uh, people could amuse themselves. So it's a, a moment of amusement, but at the same time, uh, it's the, uh, a, a moment uh, to teach uh, the place of each one in this society. So here is a 18th century uh, image of Villa Rica, the center of Villa Rica, the main building that you see uh, uh, on the back of the image is the municipal chamber. So it's a very important, imponent uh, uh, building. You see uh, it's the main uh, square that is still, uh, it's still there. Uh, nowadays, the, the municipal chambers held the Universidade Federal University of Ouro Preto, which, which became very famous uh, uh, when it was, since it was created in the 19th century due to the mining courses, the main course that they have, the main field of research that they have, they are still very strong until today. It's the mining uh, um, area and we you see the houses in the main building two stores to uh down it's uh usually a commerce held a commerce and the upper the how the 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 um, house of the owner and in the basement that you can't see here uh there was the senzalas for the slaves and here in the front of the image uh, this uh, column here, that is exactly in the middle of the of the image here, it's the pelourinho. It's the it's a, a a column of stone that symbolizes the power and the um, uh, and the domain of the uh, Portuguese empire. So I'm talking about. Uh, uh, a very important uh, celebration that uh, happens uh, at least once a year in every town. And that attracted a lot of people uh, from uh, the neighborhoods, from the farms around or smaller uh, villages that are for ev uh, in everywhere. And it's a tradition that came from the medieval times in Europe and it's the procession. So you see here in this image, the procession has uh, organization and this um, coverture here, which we call it in Portuguese, palio, um, it's uh, to uh, exactly show to the people who is the most important person that are going this procession. Another difference here that we can see is some of people go walking on foot and some people go on their horses. 
So as I told you, every aspect in a procession, it's, uh, it's in order to show who you are in the society and what uh, position do you held. And uh, usually the most important people in a procession goes in the center of the procession. So as you see here, the procession started with people walking and then there is the highlight, the most important people that comes in their uh, uh, holding, for example, like here, uh, probably a bishop, he's holding a stick. So there is uh, the other one here is a, uh, holding a cross. So all, nothing is there by chance. Everything was studied like a theater that happens in the streets. So here is a colonial uh, procession. Uh, procession were uh, used not only by church to celebrate the main feasts that I'm talking about uh, uh, in a moment, but also by the municipal chamber in very important moments. For example, the entrance of a, a, a new governor, the birth of a new prince, the marriage of the king in Portugal. So all these uh, civil uh, uh, important moments of the, of the political life in the Portuguese empire were celebrated in the colonial cities. Uh, we talked about, uh, we call them historical or colonial cities. Uh, where, uh, as I told, everything is there not by chance. So the most important people are in a horse, the kind of uh, uh, draps and uh, flags are very important. As I told this guy, which is probably the governor, is held in a stick that uh, uh, publicizes uh, the place uh, he occupied. It's very common, I will talk about this, uh, to uh, the use of uh, uh, mu mu musical instruments to open the procession because it's an artifice to call attention uh, of the people of the importance of the person who is passing by. And you see, nothing here is, is you is, uh, immediately is attractive, you know by this image, who is the important person in this procession? Not only the way he is dressed, the way the, 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 um, the, the horse is adorned, but also because uh, there is someone who is leading his horse. He doesn't have even to drive the horse, to conduct the horse. And also because he has uh, servants by his side that uh, immediately show to the people that they have to pay attention to this figure. So as I told you, everything is here not by chance. And it's here to show the importance or the disimportance of this person. And the most disimportant people are the ones who doesn't uh, make part of the procession uh, and are there only to watch. And most of that are the slaves, the black population, the colored population, and the poor white population, because we must remember there was also poor white population. Uh, so I, I'm showing here uh, different uh, uh, images of this. Uh, on the right, it's a very important moment of this culture, which is mostly an oral culture. It's the moment that arrives a, a edit or a law by the king, and there is the uh, representative of the municipal chamber who will read loud for the population for them to know what are the orders of the king or of the governor of the uh, municipal chamber, uh, because many of the people uh, can't read and write. So uh, this is also a moment of celebration and all the, uh, the codes, the social and political codes uh, uh, are, are present there. The person was, uh, who is reading are 
mounting on a horse, there was a servant uh, um, guiding or holding the horse, there was in front of the procession on the left, uh, the military that goes um, uh, playing instruments in order to call attention, uh, most uh, uh, pipes and, and drums, drums is a, a very important instrument, here you see, here is not a celebration, I, I showed put here only you to see drums, uh, and in Minas Gerais, for example, uh, it was very scandalized in the beginning because people like here, this is a common man uh, who is uh, used slaves, uh, drummer slaves to enter the cities. And the Portuguese uh, that uh, uh, saw that uh, stayed scandalized because this is something, it's a symbol of the power and common people are robbing from the king a right that uh, was uh, restricted uh, to, to militaries or administrators and so on. So again, on the right, uh, the use of this European, I'm showing here first European instruments because later I'm showing African instruments. But here in these celebrations, uh, you see it's completely different from the African heritage celebrations. The use of uh, European instruments. So the drums, the pipes, um, uh, and uh, flute, uh, and this kind of instruments. And here is very interesting because, uh, as I told you, these parts are here uh, to teach. And so uh, it's very, uh, I like uh, this image very much because here you see uh, exactly how uh, the children are learning from what they saw in the daily life. Some are in the horse. The horse of this first kid is more, uh, 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 more decorated than the others. Uh, his hat and his uh, clothes also are more elaborated. Some go, uh, there is this two middle uh, 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 which has horses, but not so many uh, adorns. And, uh, and later there are the other kids that go uh, on foot, exactly uh, learning since the early, the, uh, the, uh, early ages that uh, uh, this society is hierarchized and each one has a place to occupy. As I told you, uh, this is the main rule of the society, but we will see Minas Gerais open a lot of space for this rule to be disobeyed. Uh, and one of the reasons was the mining. Uh, the mining has uh, a, a great component of bad or good luck. And some people could uh, become rich uh, even the person uh, was born in a lower rank of the society. And we will see uh, during the 18th century, this, uh, 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 this part of the population, many of them, uh, people of color, will ask for their rights because they became rich. And so they, they, have, they want to have the uh, political, uh, rights, because everything was coded in this society. To enter in a university, for example, nowadays we made a, a, a test of knowledge. On the 18th century, you present your uh, uh, family background. So if you have uh, any, uh, what they call it, stain in your lineage, like uh, if your grandmother uh, was a, a hammer or, a, a, or a, a, a carpenter, your grandfather was a carpenter, you couldn't enter in the university. The universities are uh, privileged 
of the height level of the white society, the white and free society. So uh, after the middle of the century, we will be seeing this colored, uh, uh, enriched uh, part of the society asking for these privileges. For example, they know if they don't go to the university, they, don't, they couldn't occupy the most important posts, for example, in magistracy. So they started asking the right to go to the university, although they were uh, uh, sons or grandsons of uh, slave women. And they have to ask uh, uh, forgiveness for this stain directly to the king in Portugal. So you see that it, it, this is a society organized to be like that, hierarchized, but in the daily life, there was um, uh, challenges put in by the uh, concrete society to this so uh, immobile organization. And Minas Gerais uh, will be a very important uh, place uh, of, uh, uh, to challenge this, uh, this very solid and immobile organization. Uh, this image I put because it's very important to see that most of these celebrations were held in the main uh, squares of the city. Usually every colonial city has a main square where uh, they built the main, the municipal chamber. In the case of Villa Rica, the palace of the governor, of the captaincy, but also the main church of the, the city was in that uh, square. And it's an important thing here, the use of uh, fire uh, works in order to, not only because of the sound, that uh, it's, uh, uh, it's a, a, a different of the daily life, it's a sound to call attention, not only to the people on the square, but to all the city, that something is going on, something very important, but also, you must remember that during the night, these uh, cities were very dark. So also, there's a lot of comments and descriptions of these parties that uh, the fireworks uh, light the night. In turn, it's, it's uh, so important disrupted on the daily life, on the common life, that they were able to uh, turn the night in a day. And also, uh, everything that we will see that was paid by the municipal chamber or by the church also shows the um, amount of money that was uh, put together in order to make the celebration. So if the number of the fireworks are bigger, uh, it shows that uh, the, the uh, municipal chamber of the city uh, this church of the city is much more important than the others because they were able to held much more firework than the others. So as I told, nothing is there by chance. So again, this is Salvador da Bahia and showing uh, exactly these uh, squares where uh, a, a very important part of the daily life uh, uh, is held. So now I'm showing some of the uh, churches of uh, Minas Gerais. So uh, this is um, San Francis churches. Uh, in Minas Gerais, we had a difference because the main orders like uh, Jesuit, Franciscans, they were forbidden to come to Minas Gerais in order to, the, the, because uh, the crown think that these orders are a parallel power to them. So all the, uh, the religious life in Minas Gerais were organized directly by the crown who appointed the priests that are going to serve in this church. And all these churches were uh, built and uh, organized and directed by the local people. And these churches are organized by, like all the society, by the each class. So we have the, the churches of the white people, 
we have the churches for the Colorado people and we have the churches for the slave people because even the slaves had to be baptized and follow uh, the, the rules of and be able to go to the mass because one of the important uh, justification of the slavery was to turn these heretics to Catholicism. So we will see that uh, even the slaves, and this is uh, where, where I will focus my presentation in the end, they have these celebrations also uh, because they have to be part of the Catholic uh, um, uh, people. So uh, every church uh, had what was, we call it a brotherhood of brothers who uh, assembled together in order not only to build the church, but to, to rule the church in the nowadays and also to organize these feasts. So this is a kind of interior of these colonial uh, churches, uh, a lot of gold. So uh, uh, this is a kind of style, a Baroque style, a colonial Baroque style of the 18th century. And this is a church in Sabará, a small church in Sabará called uh, the Church of O, uh, Our Lady of O, uh, of O. <laughs> and there is small chap chapters and chapels and huge uh, churches, <clears throat> depending on the wealth of the people who, uh, the brotherhood who uh, built the church. So uh, the church is a very important moment of the daily life. And uh, here is a celebration in Rio de Janeiro of the Easter. And as I told, part of the celebrations happens inside the churches and part of the celebration uh, played outside the church in the square or in the streets of the village uh, during the, the moments of processions. There are other events that could come with these parties, like uh, presentations of uh, theater and also uh, bull fights, depending on the uh, uh, and Also, these parties uh, uh, happened in three or four days. And during these three or four days, there was places, of, uh, moments of uh, uh, praying, uh, of constriction, but there are moments like theater, uh, recitals of music uh, that are in the public or more private spaces, but also bullfights that there is the moments for the people to relax. Because as I told you, the party, the celebrations has this role also to many of these parties are celebrating a, a scent of the church that is in the main altar or in the lateral altar. And here's, as I told you, a very important moment of the celebration, which is the processions that comes from the medieval times, the, uh, the religious or civic processions that we saw in the beginning, civil processions. And now you'll see some, um, some uh, religious processions. The process, as I told you, the party, I uh, started uh, very before it happens. And the first moment of the party is that uh, I'm showing to you, which uh, the parts of the brotherhood, the people from the, bro some brothers of the brotherhood collect alms of the population in order to organize the party. Uh, uh, normally during one year, these people goes out in the city collecting alms and here is the a very the, uh, regularly the most important brotherhood in colonial cities, the colonial uh, the brotherhood of the Saint Spirit, and they uh, celebrate a very important, the most important religious party in the colonial period, which is the uh, Corpus of Christ. And here you see a slave, uh, someone who is uh, uh, is. Uh, uh, pri uh, prisoner kissing uh, the, the symbol of the Corpus Christ. And here again, these people uh, 
uh, passing through the city, calling attention, collecting albums, but also uh, saying a party will help him. They, they are announcing the party in order to everybody to spread the news that the party is coming and they will, uh, it's very important. So you see the use of instruments, musical instruments, uh, in this case, European instruments, flags, religious flags, and hats that call attention of the person, of the people who is passing, that this person is having, is uh, different from the others, and I have to pay attention what they are going to, to tell. They use it to recite poetry or small uh, music, you know, uh, chants in order to call attention for the party that are coming. So here, different uh, 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 images of this moment of collecting alms, uh, kissing the corpse of the symbol of the corpus of Christ. Again, you see, it's not only the, the white people that are giving alms, but also the blacks, uh, people and poor people. This woman, this woman is bare feet. And this one is very interesting because the, the guy uh, opens the, the window on the second floor. And this uh, here is the same image you see, the, uh, this part of the image here. So not only poor people, but also rich people are uh, uh, contributing to the party. So again, uh, you see again, they, they stick uh, in the case here, uh, it looks like it's a, a person from the municipal chamber who is collecting this alm, not a person from the Brotherhood. So probably it's, it's a feast by uh, the municipal chamber who had to celebrate a lot of uh, important events of the colonial and uh, the crown of Portugal. So again, as I told you, uh, the, the import, uh, the uh, so here it starts the moment of the procession. Everyone in the procession has its own place. And the most important people goes under the palio, under this coverture, and held the instruments of power. And music is always present. So here is uh, this procession still happens in Minas Gerais until nowadays. These are photographs of the beginning of the 20th century. Of course, uh, it's different now uh, because the society had changed. In this case here, uh, it's the students from Jamantina from uh, who are uh, going on procession. But again, uh, uh, the the procession of the Holy Spirit in Jamantina again. So these flags, the, the local priest, and a lot of people watching. This is important because there's a lot of people who doesn't make part of the procession and they are spectacles. And it has a, a meaning of that. The place you occupy in the society, you don't have uh, the privilege of being part of the procession but you are a spectacle, uh, less important people in this society. Uh, again, Jamantina, uh, nowadays a lot of people dressing as angels, but you see that this culture still happens in Minas Gerais. So another very important moment of the celebrations is the death. And death, again, is the last moment to publicize the place that everyone occupies in this society. And I will try to show uh, more quickly because it's very different the uh, way the uh, white people celebrate their uh, death and the black people. So you see here the coughing is very important to this person, although there is uh, the, the painter didn't uh, paint the, where this coughing is, but it's probably uh, put in, in a very important place of the church, probably in the altar. The guy is dressed with all the symbols of power that he held during his life. This white uh, clothes that he's using with this cross, it show, shows that he's a cavalier of the order of Christ. So all his symbols are there in the last moment to be publicized. And uh, 
usually the, the corpse stay uh, in the church to be seen for two or three days. So there's a lot of moments to publicize for the last time. The, this burials starts in the church and the light, the number of uh, candles that are light, uh, the numbers of priests that are uh, praying, uh, all of this uh, is very important. People uh, led, uh, 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 wrote this on their um, wheels. Uh, they, let, they let money for their burial in order to show for the first time the place they, they held in the, in the public life. So the number of lights you see here, candles, so while a white, uh, black purple, a black person is held in one uh, candle, this white person here uh, is held in a lot of candles, showing that uh, he's much more important. Candle was expensive. So here is a, a, a burial of a slave uh, children. And as I told you, in some moments, this, uh, although this uh, child is, uh, uh, sorry, it's a, a slave child, not children, a slave child um, uh, is buried here, it's much, much more like a, a white person. So I told you, there are moments of uh, uh, disrupting of this hierarchical uh, order. But normally, a uh, burial of a slave is much more simple. You see, he is not uh, being buried in a church in the center of the city, but in, it is in the uh, periphery of the city. Uh, the coffin, he, he doesn't have a coffin, exactly a coffin. Uh, it's only a, a table of uh, wood that uh, people are carrying. He has only one priest that are accompanying uh, the body to the grave. Uh, again, here is a slave uh, burial of a woman. It's very interesting because a lot of people on this image are women and uh, the corpse goes on a hammock, not in a coffin, a proper coffin. Um, and, uh, but also here, these are composite images uh, the idea that the painter uh, would like to pass that the, mo the moment of a, of a, uh, a burial, uh, again, a burial of a slave, it's a moment of party. And uh, the death is a party. There is a very famous book by a Brazilian historian, José João Reis, which is the, uh, one of the most important uh, historians of our African heritage which is called the death is a part. And here we will see, I will come back to this image, uh, some of African culture presented here. So other parts, this is the burning of Judas, an important celebration uh, connected to Easter. And you see that uh, also here, slaves are learning uh, the calendar of uh, the Catholic church. So the, the public space, is a, uh, and the celebrations are moments of learning. And here is the carnival. That is a moment that after the, the, the days of the 40 days after, uh, before the, the Easter, it's a moment of uh, relax, of uh, joking, of uh, uh, break a little bit the tension uh, of this, hierarchized uh, society. As I told you, uh, Fistus has this double function, organize the city, but also provide a moment of re relax. Uh, here I show very quickly another uh, aspect of this uh, Fistus that are the uh, theater that uh, sometimes happens in public space for uh, many people, but sometimes uh, happen in a uh, closed space. So here is Giamantina, I'm showing here. This is the building of uh, this local theater, which is uh, built in 1750. It's the mo uh, uh, most old theater in uh, Minas Gerais. 
So here is uh, in the beginning of the 20th century, uh, the same building, uh, which uh, was turned to another use during the 20th century, uh, but had uh, this possibility of uh, a, a very important kind of uh, uh, theater that uh, was common in this period, which was called opera, but it's not exactly the opera like we know today. It's a process, process, predecessor from the opera as we know today. It is, but uh, has in common with opera, the use of music in the theater, but also it's a moment of uh, uh, the, the, the subject of the, the place. They had this double function to teach, but also to amuse. It's a moment, uh, there are moments on the place that people could laugh, but moments that could uh, learn. There were Portuguese um, authors. The most important was a Jew that uh, was finally burned on, by the Inquisition, uh, José da Silva, the Jew. And he was a very famous uh, uh, opera player. His plays were printed as books and spread and we know that in, in many of this theater, uh, his plays were held. Uh, and also by the end of the century. So here is uh, the, the opera house in Ouro Preto that is still function as an opera house, as a theater, is the municipal theater today. And by the end of the century, uh, we had uh, very uh, two important uh, Brazilian poets uh, which were mulatos, as I told you, uh, uh, descendants of the black women and white men that went to Coimbra, studied, uh, held uh, posts on the administration and also uh, wrote plays uh, to this uh, performance. So here is inside this municipal uh, theater that is still function. And here is the, the theater in Sabara, which showed a very uh, rich uh, cultural life. But now I'm showing the last part of my presentation that we go to these celebrations uh, that are moment only of uh, uh, fun, of amusement. And here we have a kind of dance, which is called Lundu. Lundu was created in Portugal and came to Brazil but with here a different aspect of the dance because it became very sensual. The corpse uh, touched themselves, something that was in, uh, unbearable in Portugal. And I, now I'm going to the last part of my talking that what happened here is the mixture of this uh, white uh, erudite uh, culture that started mixing with the African heritage. So you see uh, the corpse here are representing moving, in movement. They have a sensual pose. The hips are dislocated. And uh, also a confraternization of people of different uh, uh, backgrounds. There are slaves here. There are uh, neighbors. Uh, there's someone playing a guitar, a, a European instrument. But here we we'll see almost the same scene by a mulatto, uh, a mulatto uh, couple uh, in a daily moment. And again, this, so it's an important uh, uh, contribution of the African uh, to this sensualization of this dance. And here again, it's a moment uh, you see it's, it's like uh, people are passing by, someone drop his uh, bag and they started chanting. Uh, again, I'm calling attention. Now we don't see more the, the guitar, the uh, European instrument, but we see an African instrument of music that I'm going to take to talk a little bit uh, so uh, Minas Gerais had a strong influence of a huge, huge pop, uh, slave population. 
that came to uh, explore the gold. It's a very important image of the beginning of the 19th century, showing all the techniques that involved the exploration of mining on the rivers, on the bed of the rivers, but also in digging the mountains. And uh, until the, the, uh, the abolition of the slave, Minas Gerais, uh, during all the 18th century and all the 19th century, uh, held the uh, biggest slave population of the country. We have a lot of demographic studies about that nowadays, and it was a, a, a huge, a immense slave population. You see here uh, one of the uh, works uh, uh, of the diamond exploitation, and there was hundreds, hundreds of slaves uh, working in a same spot, digging to uh, find diamonds. And on the right, a uh, uh, slave market in Salvador, where people go uh, to uh, buy their slaves. So again, is a, a view of this that I, I showed in, in the image before. S uh, the number of slaves uh, putting together in order to explore uh, just one spot uh, digging diamonds. Uh, we had a lot of information uh, until nowadays by we try to study these slaves, where they come from, uh, what ethnicity they held. And sometimes we are very lucky to find the documents like this that has the uh, 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 Catholic name that was given to the slave when he was baptized. But the surname uh, that uh, uh, shows where he came from. So he, he, this guy here is Anton, Anton, his name, his uh, Catholic number is Anton, but he came from Mozambique. And here, the marks, the, the uh, scarves that they had in their, in, their, in their body, and some signs in where this mark was put. Here is on his breast on the left. And also uh, this kind of categories, uh, categories, I, categories cate I forgot how to pronounce this, but to, uh, to say this slave came from Mozambique, this came from Angola, and uh, what are the most important signs they have you, uh, that you in the street you could recognize. So again, this is the diamond slavery. And here is the daily life because I would like to show not only, of course, this is a kind of a, a small amount of uh, romanticism, but we can see that slaves are barefoot. Uh, the, the fabric that they use is a local fabric like uh, uh, was made in Africa, which was called fabric from the coast. Coast is the coast of mine in Africa, where a lot of slaves from uh, that came to Minas Gerais came from, the majority of the slaves in Minas Gerais came from this region and brought with them a lot of their costumes. But then in the battle of the image, it's very interesting because it uh, uh, shows a freed woman that dress completely different from the slave from the top. Uh, they have uh, shoes, they have hats, uh, they have caps, they have a uh, uh, dress, so uh, th these are the mixture, mixer, the, the light uh, uh, mixed uh, 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 freed woman, and, but also the black African freed woman. And they they here to show that they dress much like the white people, which uh, uh, the, the Portuguese recently arrived, became very angry with this because dressing is also a public code to show the place that you uh, held in the, in the society. So dress uh, black women or uh, uh, mulatto women dressing like a white woman, it's uh, disorganizing the rules of the society. But as I told you, Minas Gerais had a lot of uh, uh, holes uh, where this uh, mixed population uh, profit from the, their white heritage. 
but even Africans. But here I showed to, to, to show you that even if, if they are dressed by the codes of the white people, they had symbols. This is uh, African called manjingas. Manjingas are a kind of uh, uh, amulet of protection. Uh, so they held African uh, symbols of uh, their culture. Uh, and that's what I'm going to present now. So slaves were everywhere because they uh, perform all the tasks on this society. And mostly they were on the public spaces all the time because they carry water like here on the right, uh, carrying water from uh, here is carrying water from the fountain. Here are carrying feces to drop uh, the feces of the house uh, outside the house, they are selling fruits, food, they are tasking everything, and they have these moments where they could uh, meet themselves, like uh, a moment of uh, um, washing clothes for the owners, where uh, slaves from different parts of Africa could uh, uh, meet themselves and could exchange uh, experience, uh, culture, uh, here I call attention the pipe, which is uh, Africa, also European, but also an African, important African costume. And again, several moments of the daily life where slaves uh, are able to meet themselves and create a, a ties of solidarity, but also to uh, share uh, uh, their culture, uh, heritage, that came from different parts of Africa. So we will see here, uh, uh, this is another colonial city, uh, which is nowadays uh, Jamantina, this village of Tijuco, uh, which is the place where the diamonds were uh, discovered. But as I, told, as I show you now to finish my presentation, we will see that these feasts, some of them religious feasts, uh, put together not only European culture, but uh, different African cultures from different places from Africa, because the, uh, the culture in Africa was not homogene. Uh, Africa is a very diverse continent. And, uh, but here the slaves uh, meet themselves and they put together um, um, signs of their culture that came from different parts of Africa. So here is a very important uh, uh, African celebration that uh, is there uh, because as I told you, the Africans also and the slaves also have their churches because as I told you, uh, uh, conversion to Catholicism was uh, uh, the major excuse in order to uh, uh, enslave these people, turn these people to, to slavery. So uh, the, uh, the, the colonial society had to provide space for them to, to practice uh, Catholicism. And uh, in all moments like the baptism, the marriage, uh, the death and the feast. And an important feast that were held in, in the, and usually they had their own brotherhood and uh, normally, uh, is uh, the brotherhood, as I told, is always de always devoted to a saint. And in the case of the brotherhood of black people, usually is the uh, late mother of the rosary, because uh, it it was uh, believed that uh, uh, that uh, uh, some images of this lady of the rosary uh, were black. And so this is a devotion uh, stimulated uh, to be uh, pursued by the African. So here is the celebration, an annual celebration that was held in many, many, many important cities in the colonial period when they celebrate uh, the, this feast of uh, the Lady of the Rosary. And uh, during a year before, the Brotherhood elected, the members of the Brotherhood elected a king and a queen uh, that one year after they will uh, go out in the city 
they uh, um, uh, go out in the city in a procession. But during the year, I will show the, the king and the queen uh, collect alms. They rain, they rented a house to, uh, to be their palace. They, uh, and they function as go-betweens between the slaves and the authorities. And during the three days of the feast, they were able also to forgive uh, 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 prisoners, to let them free, which scandalized the Portuguese recently arrived. But the local administrations uh, saw these feasts and the presence of this king and this queen as a, a go-between this huge ma uh, uh, amount of slaves uh, that must be controlled. And you see that this uh, institution of the king and the queen of the rosary is a mixture of uh, uh, Portuguese costumes and African costumes. Why a queen and a king? Because uh, in the beginning of the uh, Portuguese colonization in Africa, the Portuguese were able to convert the king of Congo to Catholicism. And later, a, the, a, a, one of the queens, the African queens in the region of Angola, a queen named Jinga, uh, during part of her, her life, not her entire life, she uh, gave up of Catholicism in a moment. I, I'm not going to enter this, but she gave up of Catholicism in a moment. But during a part of her life, he, she embraced Catholicism and she helped. So this queen of Angola and this king of Congo helped to, uh, the, uh, to, to, uh, to the Catholic church to enter in their kingdoms. And, and help to convert a lot of subjects in Africa uh, to Catholicism. So from subjects that, uh, from slaves that came from Congo and from Angola, many of them, when they arrived in Brazil, they were already uh, Catholics, they were already baptized, not everyone, but some of them. And so this, uh, this election of this King of Congo, and the Queen Jinga, they received exactly this, the names of these uh, African kings, uh, was a way uh, to perform uh, not only the organization in queen and queens that uh, had in Europe, but also in Africa. And you see, uh, there's a lot of symbols, mixture symbols. We have the guitar, which is an African uh, European, uh, music uh, instrument, but we also have African instruments that I, I'm going to, sh to show. Uh, so here is, uh, as I told you, during the year, the king and the queen, they, they, stay, they collect alms for the feast. Here is another uh, uh, African, here is the king. The king. Uh, I'm going to... Uh, call attention from this umbrella that I'm going to come back, a scepter, an African instrument, a tambourine. And here is uh, the, uh, an African king in Dahomey. By the end of 18th century, you see uh, this umbrella. So in Dahomey, in a, a lot of kingdoms in Africa, there is this use of the kings to held a scepter, but also to uh, walk under an umbrella. Here also is in, in Dahomey. So you, you know that this is the king who, who is set on his throne and he is protected by umbrella. The umbrella has a, a, a cultural meaning because it's a way of connection to the spirits above, to the... Uh, and again, by the end of 19th century, of course, uh, uh, after the colonialism, uh, much of these kingdoms uh, have become very poor, but the umbrella is an European umbrella, but the umbrella is still there uh, above the king. So uh, uh, also uh, a lot of food, African food on these feasts, 
uh, women uh, uh, or selling or distributing African uh, food, which is uh, also came from not only from European costume, but also African feasts had a lot of distribution of, uh, of uh, food. It's a moment that the king uh, in Africa uh, 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 returned to the subjects, the tax that they pay it, and there is a lot of distribution in African feasts. Uh, sorry, this is again. Uh, again, uh, another picture, uh, the setter, the crown, the umbrella, ah, the feathers, which is an African symbol of power. It's, uh, and another one. So uh, this mixture, they are uh, not barefoot, bare feet, uh, and they have the, 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 the servant uh, carrying the, the symbols, the, the, the clothes. Again, here, I'm calling attention to the African instruments that enter in Brazil with these slaves. And I go back to this image because I would like to call attention for one important aspect, not only the movement of the bodies, but also there is a change here. They are clapping their hands. So it's an important uh, uh, aspect of the African uh, celebrations to clap their hands. And we'll see a lot of uh, uh, documents saying that in African uh, uh, parties, in Africa celebrations, there are drums, not the drum, the Portuguese drum, but a different drum, a different sound, a different rhythm, but also clapping of hands, uh, uh, making uh, sounds with the, uh, the fingers that are typical of uh, uh, African um, costumes. And here again, I come back to an image that I showed before of the burial of a slave women. And these women here are clapping their hands. So again, this, uh, uh, this African instruments, the, 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 the group of musicians, it's very common. They, uh, it's, I, we have a lot of instruments and there are specific African uh, uh, ethnies that were better musicians than the others. So for example, in Salvador, the uh, musicians usually are from the from the G, G ethnicity, ethnicity. Again, African instruments, the berimbau, which is uh, uh, played until today. The same guy is a composite uh, image that uh, Debre picked uh, images that they saw in different moments, and then it, he puts this together. But you see here, the Africans are recognizing the sound. They know what uh, that means. So here is uh, some of the African instruments that were uh, drawn by a, 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 a Brazilian uh, erudite in the end of the 18th century. So this is the heku heku, uh, the balafon, the uh, uh, the uh, uh, horn. Uh, elephants, horn. the horn of elephants. Uh, this is called box, which is a kind of uh, drum, and a lot of these are instruments that the king of Dahomey sent as gifts to the king of Portugal. A lot of different drums, completely different drums from the European drum. This, these images here, unfortunately, is the collection of the National Museum that was burned one year ago. And here is uh, another image of this feast. Uh, so here is the king. This is in Jamantina, also in Tejuco. Here is the queen and the king. Uh, also the subject that is 
bouncing. This is very common in African uh, culture to go to the floor, to uh, uh, put the uh, earth on, uh, on your head in, in a public uh, display of, um, of uh, uh, resignation uh, in, in, in front of a king and a queen. Uh, here is the musicians uh, mixturing uh, European, uh, European, but also African instruments collect, collecting alms. <coughs> the, the, the flags that are always present in the European culture, but also in the African culture. Uh, as I told you, uh, uh, shots, uh, fireworks that call attention. It's a moment of uh, uh, amusement, but it's a moment that disrupts the normal order. And here we have the presence of uh, white people. They are the only ones who are not barefoot, except the king and the queen and the white people that are mounting the horse. So if the saying is true or not, we cannot say, but we know that symbolizing that uh, black people are barefoot, they go walking and the white people, here we see a priest on the right, on the extreme left. Uh, so uh, the Catholic church being a witness, uh, this is scandalized the European uh, painter that it, this is a French painter that came to Brazil in the beginning of the 19th century. He scandalized with this priest just watching this inversion of the order, uh, a king, uh, 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 an African being uh, crowned as king and queen, celebrating, and, and but there's a lot of movement on this image. And here I'm going to the last part of my uh, speech, which is uh, one of the stuff that uh, is scandalized and is very quoted by the authors is the movement of the bodies of the Africans, dancing. This is in Pernambuco in, in, in a feast. And you see that uh, the, the reports will, will uh, compare these movements to the movements of monkeys. They will call it monkey kisses. In Portuguese is mocanco or macaquices. So uh, uh, it's the beginning of the idea of uh, uh, organizing the races hierarchical. And here the Africans, the black people goes to the bottom of this hierarchy as they are uh, compared with monkeys, uh, they, they are movements. So again, I come back to this image again, these movements that uh, European would never perform. And here is in Africa, in Dahomey, the same kind of uh, movement being played. Uh, uh, the, uh, look again, the, the flag, the umbrella of the king, the movement of the bodies, the African instruments, the, corn, the horn of the elephant, and here, a very important uh, kind of, uh, a kind of, uh, there is also they, that came from Africa, this mixture of dance and fight. This is capoeira, which is performed until nowadays in Brazil. It's a mixture, it's a, it's a ritualized fight that comes to a mixture between uh, dance and fight. Um, and here again, uh, showing that this is present in the daily life of the colony performed by the Africans. Uh, and here again, the, on here, the, uh, the military come to uh, put apart what could be a fight, but it's, as I told you, it's not exactly only fight, it could be a fight, but uh, they, they train this fight as a dance. Again, so here, if, if the image before uh, uh, put the, the idea that a fight was really happening, here we see the people who are watching uh, shows that uh, it's a choreographic fight. 
Rio is Salvador da Bahia. Uh, here is the other, uh, the other side of the bay, where are the sugarcane plantations farms. And that's it. So uh, now I'm, I'm, going to, I'm going to open to the questions. And we have many questions, Professor. And I'm going to start you know, from the first um, set of questions. Uh, you have addressed some of them because they were made in the beginning, uh, in the middle of your, of your talk. Uh, but I think you, you could elaborate um, more on that because uh, we have so, so I'm, I'm going to divide in, into sets because some of them are uh, questions that uh, um, dialogue with each other, right? So Carrie from uh, Northern Ireland and uh, Queen's University, Belfast, in Belfast. And he is um, uh, he's asking, to what extent is the legacy of the social hierarchies from colonial era still present in contemporary Minas Gerais? And then Maria from Queen Mary University uh, of London, in, uh, uh, in line with Carrie's question, asks, do these celebrations still exist today? And if they do, how much have they changed? And what do they symbolize today, acknowledging a troubled colonial past or celebrating a rich culture? And then uh, Brazilians uh, like Denise and also myself, uh, we mentioned that these um, celebrations we have nowadays, for example, I would like to know how Congado, which remains in Minas Gerais, got this legacy from the Christian ceremonials. And I also remembered Folia de Reis, for, for example. And then how do these, um, uh, how do these, these Christian celebrations um, converse or, or, or dialogue or are still together in our society nowadays? And um, what influence did uh, the Europeans and the Africans have to this, these celebrations? Okay. <clears throat> uh, first of all, about this heritage of uh, uh, this hierarchical society. Yes, we still have this, and I'm, I'm going to quote a very recent event that happened three days ago during the pandemic. For uh, there was uh, in Saturday, Friday, last Friday or last Saturday, Rio de Janeiro decided to open the bars of the city. And what happened is that uh, uh, in the most rich area of the Rio de Janeiro city, the neighborhood of uh, Leblon Beach, which held a lot of uh, uh, bars uh, that are uh, 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 frequented by uh, uh, the white uh, rich people. They, what happened on Friday night was that a lot of these people, a lot of these people uh, went to, the, to these bars and crowded not only the bars, but also uh, the, 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 the streets uh, together with no masks. And these images uh, spread on the social networks. Uh, people at the municipal chamber send uh, uh, people from the health department to ask people to use masks, to get out of the streets, to uh, make a social distance. And there was a image that spread in the networks of uh, 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 the, the municipal uh, representant ask very politely to a man uh, it, that if he could uh, use his mask, put his mask because he was in a public space and there was a municipal uh, uh, decree that uh, obliged people to use masks in, in the streets, in the public space. And the, this man became very angry with the, uh, with the 
the health uh, representative of the municipal chamber. And his wife said to the guy, do you know who are you speaking to? Uh, you are nothing. Uh, he is an engineer. You can talk with him like that because you are nothing. You probably, I pay your salary. So I make what I want. So we see that in the Brazilian culture, we still have a lot of this. Uh, we still have, there's a very important um, uh, author by the end of the 19th century, Joaquin Nabucco. He was a politician also, but he was a writer and he was a very famous person uh, because he was in one of the uh, main figures of the abolition movement. And he, write, he wrote a lot of books. And one of the books, he wrote something very important. He said that uh, uh, the, uh, the abolition will come, but the enslavery culture will remain in the Brazilian society for a long time. If we don't have to the black people, not only uh, the same rights, but also the access to the uh, property and to the education. Because otherwise we couldn't create a democratic uh, society in Brazil. And in fact, this prophecy of, uh, of, uh, of uh, Nambuco is very, uh, present. Of course, there's parts of the society that modernize it. We saw that uh, in the recent years, but there is a still a uh, very strong part of the elites in Brazil that thinks that they are different from the others and they have privileges just because they are white, because they have money. And I, I read uh, uh, a piece of uh, uh, comment of a journalist of about this incident in Rio de Janeiro and he said uh, one of the comments that he makes is that uh, uh, this uh, uh, this dialogue dialogue if happens in the United States uh, happens in a different meaning the person the engineer wouldn't say ah, who, do you know who I am I'm an engineer, you can talk to me like that. The person would say in the United States, who you think you are that you can talk to me like that. So uh, it's a different way of, uh, of uh, uh, how we see ourselves inside uh, the society. And we try to change very much in the past few years. And one of the important changes was uh, the codes on the universities, the obligation, because there is a question here, how African culture influenced Brazilian culture until nowadays, there's a lot of influence, but uh, there was not recognized of this culture. When I was uh, uh, a child, our history book uh, show since the beginning, it's part of our culture, learn that uh, Brazilian culture is a mixture. It's a mixture of the African people, the Indian people, and the Portuguese people. But just after, in my book, there was a, a, a three very nice uh, uh, draws of a, a black uh, uh, child, a white child, and an Indian child uh, painted in orange. So the black, the white, and the orange, and they were held in their hands and they together formed the Brazilian culture. But just beside this very democratic image of everybody in the same level, giving hands, just beside we learned what the Indians taught us uh, or left to us, what the blacks left to us and what the white left to us. And the Indians, teach us to take a bath every day. 
So we are very clean people. We learned with the Indians, different from the Europeans, that you have to be clean and you have to take a bath every day. From the African, we learned some expressions, uh, some music, uh, some dance. And from the white, we learned everything else. We learned how to be respectful. We learned uh, the uh, Lego uh, uh, aspects of our society. Uh, we learned civilization. Uh, we learned everything that uh, uh, is considered uh, uh, important in a society. So uh, this is how we learned for, for a long time. But uh, you know, I don't know if you know, in the past years when the Labour Party became, uh, uh, took the power by the uh, President Lula and afterwards with Dilma, we had the obligation to taught African culture, not in reality, really African, not this uh, idealized, this stereotype African culture. Uh, African history, African culture became uh, uh, a discipline to be obliged. And for the first time, because usually in Brazil we had experts on slavery, but not on African uh, history. And these past years, exactly because uh, the need to fulfill these courses in the university and in the uh, not only in the university, but in the high schools and, and also in the middle schools, they have obligation to learn African history. We started uh, creating a specialization and a, a huge studies of African uh, uh, history, uh, which is very important because it's to um, not to, to uh, present African culture or African history like that, uh, like this uh, idealized and uh, inferior culture. Uh, we, uh, African uh, had a, a very important and very organized reigns with a lot of culture uh, and that we must uh, know and recognize in our society that we, we, uh, we do a lot of uh, stuff uh, in like this. We still have uh, much of these parties in, in celebrations in the colonial cities in Brazil, but of course they, lo they lost uh, uh, the, the sense of time, of course. They are meaning much more now, they are performing only religious uh, messages, much more religious messages. And, but we still have any, uh, not this year because of, of the quarantine, but I hope next year, these parts will come back and there is parties, um, the, uh, uh, celebrations to the Holy Spirit, which is more white feast, but also there is congados. Congados is a mythological uh, uh, battle uh, between the white, and the African kings in Africa. And they are performed until today uh, in, very, in a lot of cities. Uh, it's connected to the rosary feasts. And I thank someone who wrote here, I, uh, Leonie Hansel, by the, calling my attention to say enslaved people, not uh, slave people. Of course, I'm not uh, 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 English speaking. Uh, person, I uh, speak Portuguese, and I, but I will take uh, uh, pay attention to this. Of course, I agree completely, completely. Even uh, we uh, we having moments of celebration, we have uh, uh, some uh, moments that the enslaved could regain their humanity. They there's a lot of violence on slave. Uh, we can't deny this. Uh, we had, and we have to recognize that we debit to the African, to black people, uh, compensation, a social and, uh, uh, and economic compensation for the, the, all, this, all this exploration that they uh, lived in the past. 
and because of their color, they kept uh, the generations kept in uh, 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 inherited this exploration. They are the majority of the people on the um, Islams. They are majority of the people imprisoned. They are uh, 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 their payments, their salaries are much, much. Uh, they occupy uh, positions that uh, are the base of the uh, of the uh, positions. They perf they still perform the majority of the manual tasks in our society. And so we have to change that. We have to change, but it's very difficult. We see that this reaction of this, as I told, encastled and very traditional, very uh, white wing part of our, um, of our elite. And this last election, was a reaction of 12 years of trying to dem really democratize uh, our, our society. Excellent. Um, thank you. And uh, also, we have uh, an interesting uh, question uh, that might go along with what you have been saying is, um, Fadila Abda from uh, Sepulu November Institute of Technology in Indonesia. And uh, the, the point is that in this society, back then where you uh, were talking about um, the um, 18th and, uh, century, uh, 19th century, in this society, the idea was that people were different and should remain different, right? Uh, and then I was wondering what made the white men choose to mingle with women of color, resulting in mixed descendants, when I assume they are the ones who wanted to enforce this idea in the first place. So how did that mingling among uh, races um, took place, right? Yeah. And um, also uh, they are um, questioning again about the mingling. So seeing slaves, enslaved people making part of Catholic parties and um, how uh, were they allowed in uh, uh, the, the churches in these periods, uh, in this period of time? Did they have time uh, where it's very separated? Their uh, um, parties, uh, enslaved people's parties and um, Catholic parties, would they have time? Uh, were these celebrations time for uh, the enslaved people's relaxation as well? They were breaking the rules of uh, uh, all work all the time, but they also had time to, uh, re uh, were these parties also place for relaxation? And um, yeah, I guess I'll work on that and then we'll uh, I'll do another set. Okay. And so the first question, <clears throat> why white people, especially white men, why they, why they have this uh, intercourse with uh, black women, although uh, they were important part of this, uh, this society that thinks themselves and presents themselves there uh, different, each, each uh, group, uh, <clears throat> performing, performing uh, its uh, uh, really place. First of all, gender imbalance. This is the first answer. Uh, we have demographic studies nowadays, a lot of demographic studies. And what happened, that's why Minas is different from uh, the, the coast society. In the coastal society, as the uh, the colonization is much older, it began it began in the 16th century. Uh, by the end of 16th century, uh, we had uh, there uh, a very 
balanced uh, group of people. In the beginning, of course, in all colonization society, uh, colonized society, areas of colonization, in the beginning, men are more numbered than women. And ex for example, in the 16th century, the crown uh, sent to Brazil uh, women orphans, women prisoners by the Inquisition in order to populate the, the, the colony with uh, white women. Even in Portugal, they are in the lower ranks of the, the society. They were orphans, they were, um, <clears throat> they were prisoners, uh, but uh, here they could fulfill this place of uh, married women and to, uh, to for, in, in a way, forgive their past. But very early, by the end of 16th century, we had a, a, a society in the coast that uh, had uh, the white men, the young white men, could find young white women to marry. So they, of course, there was uh, from time to time, uh, men that uh, rape their slaves, women that uh, have uh, some relationship, but this is not the, the rule of the society. This is not the most common. Uh, and the number of mestizo people in the coast, there was mestizo people, but they were not uh, able to form a very important group uh, until the 19th century. In Minas Gerais on the opposite, uh, it took a long time, only in the second half of the century, uh, this balance between genders could uh, come. One, the, the Crown made a lot of effort. For example, it was forbidden to, to built nunneries in Minas Gerais in order the elite don't put their white children, women, in the nunnery because to have white women for the men to marry because they want the, uh, and there is an important thing, in the church, uh, the marriage is between equals. So white marry white, black marry black, Mestizo black uh, marries mestizo. The the uh, the marriage to happen need to be authorized by the church authorities, and the people have to present their background lineages. And it's it was very difficult. It it was not impossible, but it was very difficult. The church to allow a white man to marry a black woman. And even the church allowed, this white man doesn't want. Because he could perform the sex, he could have the children, but, and this is an important thing. You, I think most of you have heard that in the 1930s, an important sociologist in Brazil created a myth that we are a racial, racial democracy because uh, of this intercourse be, uh, between white and white, usually white men and black women, we create this uh, uh, mixture society. And the, this part of the story is true. In, in fact, we created. And in fact, uh, Gilberto Freire, which was the name of this sociologist, he was right to say that different from United States, when democracy came, we couldn't have like in United States, mm -hmm. race le legislation because the population, big part of the elite was a mixtured, a ra racial mixture. So if the legislation was uh, based on race, a lot of people from the elite will be out of the political system. Because as I told you, by the end of the 18th century, 
this uh, numbered of uh, mixture people, part of this, asked privileges, like to the right to go to the university, the right to occupy posts on the administrations, and they have to have their lineage uh, uh, investigated, because as I told you, it's, uh, in, in this society, it was a case of lineage, it was a case of birth, it was not a democratic society. People are what they was, were born, and they were born what their, their uh, ancestors passed to them by the lineage. So what they had made, they started, as I told you, asking forgiveness for this stain in this past and uh, call attention for the white, uh, um, for the white lineage that they inherit. So different from what Gilberto Freire think, Gilberto Freire thought that uh, our racial democracy was that the whites lower to the uh, and recognize themselves as black. It's the other way. What happened was the this mixture people doesn't recognize themselves no more with the African culture or the African lineage that they inherit. They erase their uh, African heritage and they saw themselves as white people. So our racial democracy was not democracy in reality. Our racial democracy is to uh, erase our African uh, uh, past. And that was the change in the past years when African uh, history started to be obliged to study, uh, when the people, uh, if they are black, they could enter the university. They have um, uh, quotes specifically and, and contexts, contests in the public administration. Now we have quotes 10%, 15%, 25% to, to, the, uh, to the black people. And this reflects in the census. What happened is that before this, this loss, people used to say they were, were white because they would like to be recognized as white because this is the advantage in the society. But in the past census, people realized that if they recognize themselves as black, they could profit some advantage. So this is a change of, uh, of uh, uh, how people recognize themselves. And this is an important change because people, we had a very strong uh, African uh, heritage in Brazil that was blanket. People wouldn't recognize. You, you, you talk to a person, you saw that she's almost black, but if she is a son of an engineer, she will recognize herself or themselves as, as white. So it's an important shift in the Brazilian culture. And of course, resistance should be expected. And it's a daily construction. Uh, it's very important, uh, this uh, uh, positivation of our, our African culture, our African lineage. And it's a shift in our society because uh, there was no racial democracy in Brazil. It's a lie. It's a completely lie. There is no racial democracy. And you see, like, for example, I will tell uh, very two different examples. The police enter in the slums, shooting all around, killing a lot of innocent people in the way because they don't respect black people and people from the slums. But they enter in a, in a white neighborhood in, in a different uh, uh, way. They don't uh, shoot in the air because they know 
if they kill by accident a white person who is not white in reality, but thinks themselves as white, it's completely different. And I don't know if you follow this past uh, two weeks ago, three weeks ago, uh, the son of a, a, a maid uh, in Recife uh, fall from the building of the, uh, of the woman she worked with. The maid uh, went out to, uh, to uh, throw with the dog of the woman and left her uh, son, five years old, with the maid because she couldn't left the, the son at home because the schools are closed and she doesn't have anyone to take care of the child. So the, the, own, the, the maid uh, gave her the privilege to take the children, the child to the work. And when she went to uh, walk with the dog, uh, the, the, her child entered in the elevator. The woman didn't uh, uh, forbade him to enter. In fact, she, um, she pressed the, the higher floor. And this child of five years old, black child, she get out of the elevator, uh, climb and follow from the 90th floor of the building. In the next day, the, the newspaper gave the news, but not displaying the name of the, of, of the, of the woman, of the owner of the house. And um, the maid uh, then um, recorded a statement that uh, went to the to the internet and she said if was the opposite my name and my picture will be on the newspapers in the next day demonizing myself but as it was a white woman she was the wife of the mayor of a small city close to Recife in, in Pernambuco she was treated in a completely different uh, way from the, from the local authorities to the newspapers, because this is our racial democracy. There is no racial democracy. Uh, so uh, the next two questions, uh, there was spaces in these public events for everybody, but the idea was everyone occupy your own space. For example, uh, theater normally happens in a closed space and it's a privilege of the white. Um, on the other hand, uh, uh, some uh, uh, things that happen in the streets are open to the public, like the uh, perform of uh, small groups of music, uh, some amusement, some uh, distribution of food, everybody could profit of this. But of course, for example, in the, in the processions, except from the procession of the Rosary Brotherhood, there is no space for black and white, uh, black and mixture people. And it's very interesting because we have uh, uh, some descriptions of these processions. And it's very interesting because in one of them, in the middle of the procession, there was a group of the call, what, uh, that they called uh, uh, small mulattoes performing instruments. But in fact, they were not mulattoes. They were white children with their face painted in, in black. And different from the rest of the, of the procession, that uh, uh, showed an image of respect. When this group passed, everybody left. So it's the, a moment uh, because here is a mockery of the, of the African culture. 
And uh, what uh, people, uh, 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 the reaction of the people was laughing. So uh, there's spaces for their representation, but the representation, although they were inside of the procession, they were there to be uh, mocked, to be for the people to react as, a, as laugh and not the respect uh, that they felt when the bishop passed, when the uh, member of the municipal chamber. So there is a public uh, uh, discourse here to even if they are inside the procession, they are inside to show that they are outside of the, uh, of the privilege uh, society. And there is time to relax. So every moment there is time to relax and uh, and most of the Africans, like I showed in the images, that they are uh, moments where they, of course, there's a lot of violence. I'm not discussing that. I'm not putting this apart. But of course, in order to uh, people to bear the violence of the slave, uh, there are moments for relax because otherwise, uh, and there was a lot of uh, rebellions also. Uh, the slaves, uh, the enslaved people, uh, rebellion, uh, make a lot of rebellions. Uh, some of, of them were uh, for short time periods success, successed, but in the end, all the rebellions that we had uh, were, uh, the authorities were able to suppress them. Uh, but we had the Quilombos, uh, which were a place uh, outside the society that uh, uh, could hold uh, uh, enslaved people who uh, escaped, who ran away from, from the, the society. Excellent. Thank you very much, Professor Zinha. It was uh, um, lots of very interesting points, it was very rich. Uh, subject. Of course, we have uh, more questions and uh, other points, and then I'm going to leave in the chat uh, the um, professor professor's email so that maybe if you have any further uh, issues, you might uh, clarify them with uh, uh, by email with Professor Junior. But we ran out of time, unfortunately. We could stay uh, longer, but we have. You know more to come over the next uh, uh, days. Uh, thank you again, Professor Junior. Thank you all for coming. We have a special invitation for you, and I would like to ask um, my dear Sophia Junqueira to uh, talk to us. Hello, Sophia. Good morning. How are you? What Hello. have you got for us today? Hello, everyone. It's a pleasure to be with you. Thank you for this invitation. I'm here to invite you uh, to a virtual tour with Inyotin. I don't know if you have already heard about Inyotin. Inyotin is one of the biggest open air museums in the whole world. And it's also a very special botanical garden because it's a tropical vegetation botanical garden and there the sculptures are mixed in this garden. So it's an amazing place and it's uh, getting very, very well known in the whole world. And you will have the opportunity to make a virtual tour in this place. And we are very excited to have this experience with you. And uh, last year, uh, that's a very big coincidence, last year I took part in the summer school on Brazilian study as I was a student of fine arts at UFMG. And with the group of summer school, uh, we went to Inyotin personally, and it was a very, very nice experience. And once I was there, I got a phone call. And in this phone call, I received the invitation to work at Inyotin. So now I'm having this experience again with you, and I'm very, very happy to receive you there. Uh, it's a shame, uh, all this pandemic uh, scenario, but uh, still you, you have a very nice uh, view of what Inyotin could offer. And then you might come back with a better idea of what this place is. 
we have prepared a very special uh, PowerPoint presentation for you with comments and with two other educators that are going to be with me in the afternoon. And uh, if you have questions, you might ask, and then you might already prepare your uh, coming back. So it's going to be a pleasure. We are very happy to be with you. It's going to take place at two o'clock and you are very welcome. Um, I'm waiting for to seeing you. Excellent. Thank you. thank you very much, Sophia. I would like to thank in advance your team and your team uh, to guide us through this uh, marvelous place that is watching and everybody after uh, if you had any doubts about coming to uh, Belo Horizonte and Brazil this afternoon you will definitely rush to the airports as soon as they're open <laughs> yes I'm sure <laughs> you come you and will. visit us right okay yes, thank you very course. much thanks everybody so we are going to have a break now and I'm going right? to say goodbye I'm going to hey, say goodbye. Let's open, our, let's open our cameras now, everyone, so that we can see each other. How about that? Let's say goodbye for Professor Zuni, so Professor can see you all. We have yeah. such a great diversity of people, mm -hmm. different Hello, faces everyone. and would, cute faces. Uh, I thank would you like so to thank you very much for everyone. being here. Oh, you look so beautiful, guys. I wish you were here with us. <laughs> okay. I hope I hope you enjoyed the talk. Oh, we did. We did a lot. Uh, if you we want to a read a little more, mm -hmm. I have a book in English, which is oh, great. Uh, yes by Cambridge University Press. It's mm -hmm. about it's uh, the name of the book is Chica da Silva. Chica da mm -hmm. Silva is right was a very famous, very very famous uh, a Brazilian. Uh, enslaved woman that uh, had a long uh, uh, time relationship with uh, a Portuguese man in the Diamond area. She's an iconic person in our history as an example of this racial democracy. And I try to not only to, uh, and there's a lot of myths about her uh, until my work, what we knew about her was almost uh, idealized myth. The last chapter of the book, I, I storicize the myth, the construction of the myth. And the first part of the book, I, I made uh, the first historical research about her and rebuilt her life in the context of Minas Gerais, so you can be able to understand a lot of stuff that I talked today, uh, um, looking at the history of Chica da Silva. And I try to show that there was no democracy, racial democracy in Brazil. In the contrary, they are descendants uh, passed as white people and uh, uh, fought for, for the rights of the white people as white people, not as, and completely erased her, mm -hmm. uh, they, are past. Past, they are African and uh, enslaved past. Uh, the name of the book is Chica da Silva, what, which is her name. Yeah, Professor, Professor Dadson uh, sent us the link to the book. Okay. Thank you very much yeah. for, for that. A Brazilian and enslaved little... woman, something like this, the subtitle. Excellent. So guys, let's grab a mug of coffee and uh, be back in... 20, 15 minutes. Thank you very much, guys. See you in a bit. <laughs>